All right, in this video, we're going to talk about histamine 1 blockers, H1 blockers. Before we talk about the blockers, let's talk about the H1 receptor. So there are different types of H1 receptors, H1, H2, H3, H4. We're going to focus on, on H1 blockers in this video. H1 blockers are responsible for treating allergies. So let's talk about them. So you take a look at this H1 guy over here. This is the H1 guy. And you can remember that he's the H1 guy because he's H, he's an H, and he's got a gun. So he's got a gun over here. H gun for H1. So this is the H1 guy. And you'll see attached to him on these four different parts of him, we see four different things. And these are gonna, these are gonna remind us of the four different functions of the H1 receptor. You see the brain on top, or H1 receptors in the brain, and when they're activated, it will lead to something like, things like wakefulness. We see this dilated vessel over here, the vasodilation. When H1 receptors is stimulated on the endothelial cells, it causes vasodilation. We see the nerve over here, the nerve ending over here. Doubles. Remember when, when histamine is activated on the nerve endings, it causes pain or itching. And we see the thin broccoli over here, the broccoli that's constricted. That was remember the bronchoconstriction. Histamine in the lungs can cause bronchoconstriction. And that's why excessive histamine release will lead to things like difficulty breathing. Okay, so now that we talk about histamine 1 receptors, the H1 receptors, let's talk about the blockers. That's what's going on on this side of the scene over here. We have these two guys. We have on top over here the first generation histamine 1 blockers. And the bottom, we have the second generation histamine 1 blockers. Now, if you notice, both of them are sitting on this reverse arrow, the reverse arrow over here. This is to help us remember that the histamine 1 blockers, the H1 blockers, both the first generation and second generation are reversible inhibitors of H1 receptors. Okay, let's talk about each one now. So let's talk about first generation, that's on top. So we have N, that's mean over here. His name is N, you see the E-N, and he's mean. This helps us remember the N-amines, that the first generation H1 blockers usually contain N-amine in their name. Diphenhydramine, chlorpheniramine, doxylamine. Now there is another one that I didn't mention, and that's dimenhydrinate, so you'll just have to remember that one. So what are these H1 blockers, these first generation H1 blockers used for? Well, they're used to treat allergies. Well, as we mentioned, histamine receptors cause the symptoms in allergies. That's why the H1 blockers can treat the allergies, can treat things like urticaria, angioedema, and allergic rhinitis. It can treat motion sickness as well, H1 blockers, due to their effect on the brain, as well as you be used as a sleep aid, because as we mentioned, hist H1 receptors can lead to wakefulness, so the blockers can, can be a sleep aid to help a person sleep. Adverse effects of the histamine 1 blockers in the first generation include sedation. Yeah, we mentioned that histamine 1 blockers can induce tiredness. Adverse effects would include sedation, unwanted sedation, antimuscarinic effects, including atropine-like effects like dilated pupils, blurry vision, and dry mouth, as well as anti-alpha adrenergic receptor effects, such as orthostatic hypotension and dizziness. All right, now let's talk about the H1 blockers second generation. So here we have a dean. He's the dean of a school, so he's a dean. This helps us remember that the second generation H1 blockers all have a dean in their name, lorotidine, fexphenidine, and deslorotidine. And again, there's another one that I didn't mention, and that's cetirazine. Lorotidine is more known as Claritin, and Cetirazine is known as Zyrotec. These, of course, are also used to treat allergies. All right, these have less adverse effects because they're because they're de decreased ability to enter the CNS since they're less lipid soluble, and therefore they'll be less sedating than first generation H1 blockers. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this scene on the H1 blockers. Stay tuned for our next video in pharmacology.